So you want to go native, you want to go wild, but you want to keep your crazy in a box. So today we're going to be talking about native wildflowers that you can keep in a container. Welcome back everyone to Vlogmas, where I am answering tons of questions as a special gift from me to you as part of the Christmas Vlogmas season. So between Thanksgiving and Christmas, I am putting out five videos a week because I'm a little bit crazy or a little bit wild, who knows? And today we're going to be answering crossing the lines question. Love your videos and Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Please list the easiest native plants to grow in a container. Thanks. Okay, crossing the line. Well, some of these I have grown in a container before. Some of these I've seen at like native nurseries or others on some of the gardening groups that I'm part of growing containers. And some of these just based on their growing habits, I am highly, highly suspicious that they will do very well in containers. So let me start you with this fabulous list. Even if you're not into container gardening, you may want to grow this in a container just because this is such an aggressive cedar. And I am talking about tropical sage. This native plant, which comes in kind of that vibrant coral red, which I love, and it can also come in a nice pale pink, or you can get it in white, and sometimes they mix together and they'll fade into other colors. But my favorite's the, the tropical coral red one. This one, <laughs> it seeds so much. I have it in my backyard, and oh my gosh, can you find seeds of it everywhere, everywhere. And if you are not into, like, if you're not necessarily into container gardening, but you wanted this, you may want to just put this in a pot so you can keep it like near some cement. So it doesn't just absolutely like go everywhere. But I have seen this one in containers at lots of different nurseries. And it's a great one that you can put like in a five gallon pot and mix with some other wildflowers. And the reason is, is that, and that's what I'm kind of trying to think through as I think through container gardening is you kind of want some layers, even though you're still in a container, right? Like if you're in that five gallon kind of pot range, like you've got space where you've got your tropical sage coming up and then you can do some things below it, which can be really, really nice for attracting butterflies and bees to whatever space that you're trying to. And what's great about tropical sage, like for me here in central Florida, it blooms almost the entire year, other than necessarily like our coldest months. And even honestly, I feel like it does that too. I'm zone 10A. So we don't get quite as cold as like North Florida, but if, this is one of those natives that like put it in once and like get blooms for almost the entire year, which I think is amazing. You are really good pruning. So if it's starting to get leggy and um, it's going to seed, you can just and it'll come back and come back and it will fill in and it will start to fill out. So we, usually when you buy it, it's like one little <laughs> and then over time it'll fill in, which is nice. And the other great thing about this native plant is it can handle the deluges of rain but it also can get through drought season. So once you get this established, if you forget to water it, it probably will be okay for a minute because it can handle our natural droughts. <laughs> Another one you might want to consider for creating kind of volume and height in a container would be Coreopsis. Whether you're going to go with Coreopsis Leavenworthy or Coreopsis Lancelata, both of them are native to our state, both bring in a lot of yellow. Um, if you want kind of the yellow with the black center, go with Leavenworthy. If you want the yellow and yellow, go with Lancelotta. But both of these have a very upright structure, but they'll kind of be more voluminous where I would say you're going to get more of a V shape <laughs> with your tropical sage. This one, you will start to, it will start to really fill out and can take up a lot of space in a pot. So if you're looking for something that's going to give you like a lot of yellow and fill in really nicely and give you a little bit of like a daisy like look, and I just, I don't know, I've talked about this before, it kind of bobs in the wind. I really enjoy that. This will be a really nice one for that. Because it's so voluminous, you could mix and match it with something like the tropical sage because it'll kind of come up and through. So something to think about. A little bit of red, a little bit of yellow. Maybe you want pink and yellow? Some people like that. Oh look, here's Coreopsis lancelata. It's on my shirt. <laughs> Coreopsis, our state wildflower. And another thing about Coreopsis, it blooms most of the year. So you're not going to be sitting there with like an empty pot with no blooms. Also sell seed pretty well. So if it starts to die off, like you might actually find that new ones pop up. Now, I know this is like one of those crazy ones and people think I'm a little bit of crazy, but this one I've actually grown in pot for like well over a year and it did really, really well. And if you want to bring in pollinators, but don't want to deal with how it can spread everywhere, Biden's Alba does actually really, really well in pots. It has such a deep taproot system. So you do want to put it in like a five gallon pot that it can handle you overwatering it, then underwatering it, then you just like chop it down at the base and like it'll come back and come back and come back. And when it's really healthy looking, like when we haven't dumped tons of chemicals on it, which is how most people usually see it in like a parking lot, it looks so sad. 
so sad. But when it's actually really happy, it's a very pretty, like kind of happy white flower with a yellow center. I think it's very, very pretty and the pollinators love it. And if you want to mix in like, again, a couple of these colors, or you want to do like a couple pots near each other, I think this can give you a lot of different textures and flower shapes. So you can bring in lots of pollinators, or even if you're not trying to bring in lots of pollinators, it just creates a lot more visual interest that I think is really, really pretty and desirable. Now this next plant, I think while it probably will be very hard for it to go to bloom, I think if you're going to mix it with some of these other wildflowers, it ha I've seen it in pots mixed together and I think it's really pretty because it kind of hides how this one won't look cute. And that is adding in either butterfly weed or swamp milk weed into your pot. Because basically once you get caterpillars, especially when it's a new plant, they look like sticks. They don't look cute. But it will bring in the butterflies. And if you are trying to container garden and bring in butterflies, you put one of these in, then you put one of these other kind of more substantial ones. The butterflies will be so happy. They will be drinking the little nectars. Then they're gonna put out their little eggs on the milkweed. They will go and eat all the little milkweed. You won't be sitting there being like, my plant looks like a stick. So I wouldn't plant it by itself. And uh, having the other wildflowers around the butterfly weed or the swamp milkweed will actually protect them from things like wasps coming in because it gives them a lot of different places to hide. So they can hide amongst the Coreopsis or if you have like the tropical sage, they'll go below that. And when we get kind of some of these other low growing plants that you can also mix in to create kind of some levels in your pots, this would work really well. And the nice thing is, is that if you do get the caterpillars, oftentimes, if you have it in a pot, they'll just make their chrysalises along the edges of the pot. So look out for that because they just like doing that. So if you're looking for a more orange look, go with butterfly weed. If you're looking for more of that pale pink. Oh, and to be clear, when you look for our native milkweed, the really like strong pink swamp milkweed that's always advertised out there, that's not our eco type. That's from like all the other states. Ours is the very pale pink. You'll see it. It almost looks white with like a, just a just a dash of pink to it. That's our native one. And just kind of like a wild card one that you may want to think about and I've been really looking at and I think might do well in a five gallon pot would be starry rose and weed. Something maybe to think about. It again has a really nice tall structure that you can mix in with some other low growing wildflower type native plants. Um, but you got these nice, pretty substantial flowers. I mean, right there, like I'm looking at them right now. <laughs> it's December, they're blooming and they're about this size each flower, which I feel like is really good. And they're yellow. They kind of look like this, not exactly, but pretty close. And um, think about that. Think about that. Maybe Starry Rosen would be a really good one. But everything shouldn't be height. Everything shouldn't be height. So another couple things that you might want to consider growing in containers. One is one of our edible plants, which is scrub blueberry. And the reason is, is it likes acidic soil. And a lot of the other things that we grow don't love as acidic soil as scrub blueberry likes. So the way you can kind of get around that is by putting it in a container. Bees like the flowers, birds like the berries. It's just kind of looks very especially if you're going to do like a whole set of containers. Like if you're going to do lots of pots, this one might be actually really nice in a five gallon because it has kind of this evergreen look um, with silvery leaves that get kind of a little, a little reddish. It's very pretty. So I think if you're going to have like a whole set of containers, like on a balcony or an area and you're on like a patio, this one would be really pretty because it could bring in some texture and greenery to the area and it will be evergreen most of the year. And you'll get a couple blueberries. I mean, is not that pretty cool? I feel like it is. But if we're going to keep going with some of our wildflowers and plants, I'm going to talk about one that's technically not native anymore. I know it's so sad because it's such a favorite of everyone. It is technically naturalized to Florida, but it is outside of our range. And that is blanket flower. Our native blanket flower is no more native. So sad. So sad. But it's still good for wildlife. They'll enjoy it. And it's got a pretty substantial flower that's a little bit lower growing. So you can mix it in with some of these other things. I think with the color palettes that we've talked about, I think it would look really, really nice with like your tropical sages, um, which will really get up and above it. And I think it would also look nice with, but also look nice with like maybe the, ah, I mean, well, it does look nice with the Coreopsis. I had it planted back there, back there, back there. I had it back, back there somewhere. Um, and it looks really pretty, all those together. So kind of depending on what color palette you want to go to, it's a little bit lower and it can handle being in a container. And then to continue on this kind of just idea, if you want to kind of do some mixed flowers in one pot, is one of the things that I would put that would be really low would be frog fruit. I think frog fruit would look really, really pretty as kind of covering and helping cover the soil in your container. So if you have something like tropical sage or one of these other plants coming really up, frog fruit will fill in that bottom six inches to nine inches, right, of height 
with greenery. It will have the small flowers, but what it'll also do is because it's kind of a trailing plant, it will come down the sides, which will look really cute, right? It'll give some visual interest. So instead of like, if you have like a pot that you're just like, ah, it looks okay. This would be one to like maybe uh, let kind of trail down it because you're like, I don't really want them to see the cruddy gray pot I have, but it's a good pot and I'm not getting rid of it. So maybe that's one that you throw in there. And it will attract butterflies because it's the host plant to three different butterflies, white peacock, common buckeye, and the scion crescent. So you could end up with those. And their caterpillars are pretty small and will hide kind of around, but you'll attract more of the butterflies. So if you're looking for, like if you ever think about some of the house plants people put in containers that kind of drape down, you're gonna get a little bit of that happening just naturally from frog fruit. Another plant to consider throwing in there that can like do some low growing, and I have not tried this one. So this is one of the ones that I say is kind of experimental, but I do think mixes really well with some of these tall flowers. And that would be our native Puerto Rican weed. It only gets like six inches, one foot at the most, but mostly six inches tall and it's gonna grow low. It's gonna kind of have like, it's just visually very interesting. It's got small blue flowers. It's again, it's a host plant. So you're gonna get um, some of our small blue butterflies that'll be coming on by, but a lot of the bees and butterflies that you're tracking with some of these other plants will really, really enjoy those flowers. Like even some of your bigger butterflies really, really like those tiny little, little buttercup. It's gonna give you a lot of green texture. It blooms most of the year for central and south Florida. Um, and it will bloom a pretty substantial amount for North Florida. So it's one of those ones you'll have greenery most of the year, you'll have flowers most of the year, and it's really kind of just like a base foundational plant that you could put in a pot and mix with some of these taller flowers. Now, if you're looking for a pot that you just want to kind of have full of a flower, right? Like, I get it. We all kind of just like being like, I want this. There's two flowers, actually, I guess three flowers. It's our cone flowers. <laughs> That's where really the idea is coming from. So black eyed Susans, purple cone flower, and orange cone flower. They can really, really fill out and really fill a pot so that if you're really looking to like intermix some of these and just get splashes of color right purple cone flowers kind of in that lilac oh hi almost flew right at me zebra longwing um you're gonna get kind of this paler not pale pale purple but you're gonna get kind of a lighter purple which is really pretty of course black eyed susans have that nice really really pretty kind of like yellow yellow orange and then orange cone flowers a little bit dar darker than like a black eyed susan but similar in structure but it's a little bit more orangey and so i think if you're really looking for kind of this cottage feel that you want to go for containers right i think mixing that with some of the other plants is gonna be really pretty but you kind of just have this really big burst of color that would look really cute another thing you might be thinking about for container gardens is you might want to have like let's say you kind of have one of those like i don't know what you call that like flower boxes a lot of florida homes are built with them they're cements and they're high up and they do a thing a couple plants you might want to think about adding in that um, will stay evergreen and do flower throughout the year is scrub mint and calamanthia they have just kind of a just general green structure that's kind of in that blue green area it's got a lot of texture so if you're looking for some plants that are kind of like base plants to put in like flower boxes or if you just wanted to do like a pot you could do it in a smaller pot like kind of think one to three gallons I don't know if it, one gallon would probably be too small for the long range but three gallons would be totally fine um, and five gallons would probably be better and you're gonna get a plant that's like you know kind of in that range I feel like that's a good size that you can intermix with either a bunch of other flowering pots or if you want to just put in one of those flowering things and you're just looking for something that's evergreen and if you actually did like a scrub mint then a blueberry, then a scrub mint, then a blueberry, you get kind of a textural difference. That would be really nice and something that looked very aesthetically pleasing. Originally, I think I was going to go for a 10. I feel like I gave you a lot more, but I'm going to give you one more bonus for a container. And while all of you know, I'm not really a big fan of houseplants because that tends to be the section that is invasive species city in the store, there is a plant that's in there that's native to Florida. And it's very popular houseplant. And that's our native peperomia. Peperonia? Peperoni? Peperoni? <laughs> this this name is native to florida they're selling it all across the country as like this exotic house plant it's just from florida and it can grow in like the semi-shade areas semi-wet areas and it can grow in a pot so if you're looking for a potted house plant or just a potted plant this would be the one house plant that Jacqueline gives the wild Floridian check of approval to because it is native to our home state. So whether you have acres and acres of land or you only have enough room for a couple of small pots or containers, you too can be growing Florida native plants. So I hope this helps inspire you for some really wonderful ideas to, you know, make those cement spaces look a little bit greener or maybe even bring that one house plant into your house. Okay, remember we're going to be doing bonus videos through all the way till Christmas. So if you have a question, go ahead and put it down below. I hope you've been enjoying this as much as I have. This has been awesome and I'll see you soon. Bye.